Hi, this is Dao Too Fast here. In this video, I will be replacing the radiator in my 2004 Nissan Quest. And recently I noticed there is a lot of leak coming out from the top of my radiator. And you can see all the antifreeze, the splatter at the top. And this is the original radiator, so it's just getting old. And the seal between the plastic top and the metal core at the bottom is leaking. So I'm going to pull this out and put in a new one. Now, here are the supplies that I'll be using to do this job. I have a drain pan along with this Lyle spill-free funnel and I'll show you later on how to use this. This is one of the best tools you can have if you're going to be doing any radiator work. I got some distilled water, some pre-stone antifreeze and this is the replacement radiator from Spectra. The part number is CU2692. Here's a quick look inside. The first thing we'll need to do is remove the fan that's at the back here. So we'll need to remove the air intake duct right here. Also the battery. Now some people don't remove the battery, but it's going to save you time later when you try to remove the fan because it's a very tight fit. So if I remove the battery and the battery tray, then the fan's going to come out a lot easier. Go ahead and remove the clips on this air duct. Now we'll disconnect both battery terminals because we're going to remove the battery. Remove this plastic tray. Underneath, we have several bolts you need to remove. These ones are 12 millimeter. There's one more bolt underneath this corner, so we'll need to remove the air box right here. Remove this 10 millimeter at this corner. Now you can pull this upwards. And there are two plastic pegs held into the rubber grommet over here and over here. Here you can see we actually have two bolts here at these corners. You want to remove those. Release the clip that's holding this wiring bundle. Now you need to release this fuse relay box from the bracket. There are two push plastic tabs here. Go ahead and push it in and pull it upwards. Looking at the two fans here, we have a connector that you need to disconnect right here. Also another connector on this fan right here. The fan is held in with two 10 millimeter bolts at the top here. So we'll go ahead and remove that. On both sides of the radiator, there are these rubber bushings that you need to remove. Here's a close-up look at how you remove these. On both sides, there are these plastic tabs. You want to carefully just pull these out a little bit. Don't pull too hard because you don't want to break it. And then while you're pulling it out this way, then go ahead and push this forward. You see how this comes out now? Now that we've removed all the stuff we need to remove at the top, we can go ahead and jack this car up and put on jack stands. The next step is going to be draining the antifreeze and make sure your engine is cold so you don't burn yourself with hot antifreeze. Underneath the vehicle, 
there is a plastic splash shield. It's held in by clips. Go ahead and remove this. Now we'll put a drain pan underneath. Looking at the passenger side of the radiator, here you see a drain plug. You need to remove that with a Phillips screwdriver. To speed up the draining process, go ahead and remove the radiator cap. Looking at the bottom of the radiator, here is the driver's side. There is one transmission line that you need to remove, moving along towards the passenger side. Here we have the second transmission line we need to remove. Next to it, that's the lower radiator hose that we also have to remove. We'll start off with removing the transmission hose that's on the driver's side. I'm going to put a hose clamp on this. To stop the transmission fluid from dripping from the radiator, I took the cap off the new radiator and I just put it on. That will plug it up so it will stop the fluid from coming out. Here I'm going to remove the second transmission line. Now we'll remove the lower radiator hose. The last two things we need to remove is the top radiator hose and the overflow tank tube right here. Now we can remove the fan. All you have to do is pull it straight up. At the back here, I just noticed one of the transmission lines actually hooked onto the fan here. So I'm just going to pop that hose off. There it goes. And this comes out very easily. So let's have a look here before I remove the radiator. With the radiator, just lift it straight up. Go ahead and drain the rest of the antifreeze from the radiator. Here's a side-by-side -side look of the old part on the right and the new part on the left. With any job like this, make sure the radiator you got is the correct fit and it looks exactly the same as the original one that you pulled out. Now to show you how the radiator gets fitted onto the vehicle, the bottom of the radiator has these two plastic pegs. This will go into the rubber grommet and then over here, this slot that you see right here, that's where the fan will be fitted right in here.
Now we can install the top two plastic clips to hold the radiator in place. Now we'll reconnect the lower radiator hose. Here's one of the transmission line. Now I'm going to connect the transmission line on the driver's side. So this is how things look with the bottom hoses all connected up. Now we'll reinstall the fan. Reinstall the two 10 millimeter bolt. That holds the fan to the radiator. Next we'll reconnect the wiring on the fan. Connect the upper radiator hose. Connect the overflow hose. Now don't forget to put that lower transmission line back into that little plastic hook on the fan. At this time I'm going to reinstall the air filter box and the battery and then I will fill the radiator with antifreeze because I will need to start the car up and check for any leaks and also bleed any air out of the system. So the battery do need to go back in.